welcome to lectures on surveying 2. In today's lecture, we will learn about triangulation. Before starting a triangulation, let's learn what is the meaning of triangulation. So, what we understand from the triangulation that it is the process of measuring the angles of chain or the network of triangles which are formed by the station marked on the surfaces. What we are what we will understand this, we generally try to measure the angles of different form triangles as well as we try to find out the length and on the basis of that we try to optimize the area. So let's learn after that what is the principle of triangulation, how we will start uh, how we will start and how we will do the calculation during this triangulation. So as we are seeing the triangulation in the triangulation it will be it will be having a series of triangulations. It will be having a series of triangles and on the base of that we will try to determine the requirements. So what the principle of triangulation says that if suppose the area is divided into number of triangles and of this, uh, within this triangle if, if we know the internal angles of this triangle means it will be having three internal angles that is angle 1, angle 2 and this will be angle 3. All the internal angles are known for this triangle and the length of one side is known. Let's say this is the side, and if the length of this one side is known, then by using the trigonometry, we can determine the length of all the remaining sides. Means this is the uh, if these all three internal angles are known, and the length of this one side is known, then by using trigonometry, the length of all other sides can be determined by using trigonometry. This is what this principle of triangulation. As well as if we know the word, if we know the coordinate of one vertex, let's take this one vertex, if we know the coordinate of this this vertex, as well as if we know the azimuth of any one side, let's take we know the azimuth of any one any one side that is this one. If we know the coordinate of this vertex, as we know the azimuth of this side, then the coordinate of remaining vertex can be determined. So what is the principle of triangulation? The principle of triangulation says that if all the internal angles of a triangle is known and the length of one side of a triangle is known, then by using trigonometry, we can determine the length of all other sides. That is one thing. Other than that, if the coordinate of one vertex as well as the azimuth of any one side is known, then the coordinate of other vertex can be determined. Here, the side whose length is already predetermined. We are taking this is the one of the side of triangulation whose length is already predetermined. This is one of the length, uh, this is one of the side whose length is already, already predetermined means you are knowing the length of this side already before starting a triangulation. Then this left side is known as the baseline. then this is known as the baseline and the point whose vertex is already known these are known this, this point this vertex is known as the triangulation station this point is known as triangulation station this is the principle of triangulation Now next one, what are the purpose of triangulation survey? Why to prefer in what circumstances we can prefer or we can adopt the triangulation survey that we will try to learn in this slide. So what is the first point? It is saying that to establish the to establishment of accurate control points for length and geodetic survey. So that means we can prefer this we can or we can use this uh, triangulation in between. Uh, means we can use this triangulation survey for the plane survey as well as for the as well as for the geodetic survey. What is the plan survey and what is geodetic survey? We have already learned all these things. When a survey is done on a small area or for a small construction job, where as we are saying that it is very for a small area for a very small job, so that the earth surface will be considered as flat. As it is as we are doing it on a small area, the earth surface is considered as flat. We are not considering the curvature of earth. Then, just that type of survey will be called the plane survey. 
while the surveys done on very large area like highways or railways where the area is very large so we have to consider the curvature of work so as we are considering the curvature of work we have to consider the refraction effect as well as the curvature effect and we have to go for certain correction that survey is called the geodetic survey so we can use the standardization survey for the establishment of accurate control points for both type of survey that is the plane survey as well as for the geodetic survey then the establishment of accurate control points for the photogrammetric survey also of the large area for this for this photogrammetric survey also we can use the triangulation triangulation then for the accurate location of engineering works what kind of accurate what kind of engineering works for the fixing center line and terminal points and shaft for the long run that is can be a tunnel so for fixing a center line as well as terminal points for a while constructing a tunnel also we can use the triangulation survey and similarly for surface fixing center line as well as abutments for the long bridges also we can prefer this triangulation survey after that the main important that is for transferring the control point across wide C channel as we did, as we will discuss during this this system of uh, triangulation that large areas divided into number of possible ways of layout we have to transfer we will be knowing one control point or we will knowing some base then we have to transfer the control points from one from one uh, or from one order of triangulation to another order of triangulation so by doing all those things also means during that uh, we require the transferring of control points so that proper degree of accuracy can be maintained during this work also the triangulation is always required so there are some of the purposes of triangulation survey then we have a different classification of triangulations we have the primary triangulation as we are seeing here this is the one type the triangulation is classified into three categories that is first one is primary second is your secondary and then here tertiary this primary triangulation is also known as the first order triangulation or the first grade of triangulation or the highest grade of triangulation as we are saying we have classified the triangulation into three categories the first one is primary triangulation second is secondary triangulation then tertiary triangulation this primary triangulation is also known as the first order triangulation or the first grade while the second is also known as the second order while this tertiary is nothing but the third order There is eight. Uh, so there are three types of triangulation. So what is the first? Let's discuss the first one. That is primary triangulation. As we are saying, this is first order triangulation. So that it is. That means to say that it is the highest grade of triangulation, which is generally employed, or to say which is generally used for the determination of shape and size of large earth surfaces. So as we are uh, saying, uh, for large earth surfaces, we have to. take the control points we have to set is we have to set the control points or to say we have to fix the control points also and there will be certain trend for fixing this set for fixing the control points generally suppose this is one of the control point then another control point is then this is another control point is somewhere here so there is uh one trail there is one red trail there are there is one red uh, there is one uh, what we can there is a uh, uh, there is uh, one uh, standard that the station points should be at least 16 to 150 km apart within if you are adopting the primary triangulation the control point should be at least 60 to uh, 16 16 to 150 km apart okay as we are seeing this is the highest degree of uh, triangulation or this first order triangulation the great degree, degree of preciseness is required during the triangulations and the uh, this great a uh, great precautionary measures need to be taken during linear angular and astronomical observations so this is the primary triangulation that is the also known as first order triangulation now let's concentrate on the second one that is the secondary triangulation we have already discussed that this secondary triangulation is also known as the second order triangulation Here, the degree of preciseness can be compromised up to a certain level as compared to the primary triangulation. Where will we use this? It will be employed to connect 
to primary series and this is secondary order which will come after primary so it is used to connect to primary series also to provide control points get very closer to the primary transmission as we are saying they are uh, we can uh, compromise uh, in terms of the degree of accuracy or preciseness up to a certain level but we try to achieve the degree of accuracy almost close to the primary transmission that only we are trying to say here that to provide the control points closer to the primary transmission then we have next one that is the tertiary transmission it is also known as the third order triangulation what is this it is also it is used to provide control points between what we discussed the first order and second order to provide the control points between this first order and second order series we prefer the third order triangulation this tertiary triangulation that is known as third order triangulation this is also known as the topo triangulation now let's discuss the layout of triangulation this layout of triangulation is also known as the system of triangulation this layout of triangulation is also known as the system of triangulation what what we understand from the way from the term layout of triangulation the arrangement of triangles of a series the arrangement of triangle uh, triangles of a series is known as the layout of triangulation in this we have three uh, we have three types that is the number one what we can see here the simple triangles in chain simple triangles in chain then we have the next one
and we have the breast triangles. Then we have the field work of triangulation. How to perform this triangulation on the side or on the field? This field of triangulation uh, can be done into the four steps. So, what are those four steps? This triangulation, the field work of triangulation can be carried out into the four steps. 
those are the first as we can see here that is legal and friends Direction of signal. And third, the measurement of base line. Control points. We will. Uh, we have. We can do the triangulation as well. We will move further. We will 
transfer the control points also. So a proper baseline or the fixing of baseline is very very important. This it has its own prime importance. Therefore, the suitable position of baseline is very important. So during this recurrence, the survey will find out the suitable location for the this baseline. Then after baseline, as we have discussed, the triangulation station that is control points are also important. So after finding uh, suitable position of baseline, we have to find out the suitable triangulation station where we can provide the triangulation station so that we can move further as well as after setting the triangulation station also we have to see that where uh, we have to check whether uh, we, have, we have to check the intervisibility in between those stations if, if those stations are not even at all visible how we can move further yeah. if there are some problem there visibility there must be certain visibility if there is some obstruction then they will be then it will obstruct the vision in between them, it will obstruct the line of sight and we cannot move further. So intervisibility between the station is very important. Uh, then to improve the uh, to improve the uh, observations and to, uh, for better observation we can use the signal or we can go for the access signal collection or we can use the different types of signal. signal. That is different matter but first of all the intervisibility between the signal is very important. So during this recurrence we generally uh, so we need to concentrate on these uh, four points or to say these four points are at its prime importance during the recurrence So what we are doing during uh, this recurrence first of all we are trying to find out the type of terrain which is available then we are uh, finding the suitable position for baseline then selection of suitable triangulation restriction then determination of intervisibility between the triangulation restriction or between the control points. This is the first step which is involved in the field work of triangulation. Then we have the next, that is direction of signal. So, to define the exact position of triangulation, generally we use these signals as well as to get the, pro as the site will be very far, there will be distance between two points, six kilometer, ten kilometer. Then it will be very difficult using the instrument to sight the station or to sight the uh, another uh, another station point where we need to uh, take the object uh, where which we need to observe. So in that to define the exact position of that station, that point, we generally use this signal that helps in collecting the data. So the signal should be exactly vertical at the point where the observation are to be made at that point the signal should be exactly vertical as well as the need to be centered over that station otherwise there will be error in the recorded data. So this uh, accuracy as we are seeing this will depend on the centering of signal. We know the importance of centering in the survey. The survey centering is the first step which is always involved before starting the work. So centering it has own importance, it will be necessary during this signal during this observation in this point that is direction of signal because the accuracy of the measurement will also depend on the centering of signal. So this is the direction of signal. About signal we will discuss in detail. Let's concentrate on the third step that is measurement of baseline. As we are saying the baseline as well as triangulation stations they are at, they have their own prime importance they are very important as these will be required during the transferring of the control points. So the proper base in the therefore direction or the fixing of proper baseline is very important. The accuracy of this uh, measurement of baseline or of fixing of baseline depends upon the grade of triangulation, whether it is the first order or it is the second order or it is third order. It depends, the accuracy of this baseline depends upon the grade of triangulations. As we have discussed, why it is already important. The length of baseline depends upon also the grade of triangulations, that is the distance between or the range between the triangle between the triangulation stations. These are some of the factors which affect the selection of baseline. What are those? The ground at this station should be fairly level and then it should be also free from the obstruction throughout its length so that intervisibility between the station can be maintained so the other two factors which are to be considered during the selection of the baseline then we have the fourth step that is the measurement of horizontal angles as we want the proper we want the preciseness we want the degree of good degree of accuracy hence 
to achieve this good degree of accuracy or preciseness which is required for the digital photo light the least count or the least possible error in this digital photo light is 1 second the least count is 1 second so the chances of error or possibility of error is very less if you are using the digital photo light as its least count is 1 second so for the measurement of horizontal angles we need to prepare the digital photo light so this is the field work of triangulation now we have the signals we have two types of signal mainly one is luminous signals and then we have opaque signal
while in target signal, this target signal will also have a around pole only. This will all this will also having the round pole only, but this round pole has two target. This target may be the square one or it may be a rectangular one, which are fitted right angle to each other. They are targets. This is the round pole. So this is the pole target signal. The one important point in this, the pole signal target signal that the line is a useful or we can use this signal when the line of sight is less than 6 km. Less than 6 km, then we can prefer this pole signal or the target signal. Signal, it will be containing again the round pole only, which will be tied with the glass.
If we do this, we get the angle x as 30 degree, 28 minutes and 2 seconds. Similarly, in the triangle B, D, Z. The angle Y is, this will be, this is a triangle, angle 2 and angle 4 is already given. So, if we subtract the angle 2 and angle 4 from the 180 degree, we will get the angle Y. So, this will be 180 minus degree minus angle 2 minus angle 4. Angle 2 is this one, angle 4 is this one. Subtract it from 180 degree, we will get the angle Y. This is, this is as 6 degree, 35 minute and 48 second. We have already calculated this angle. This is not to us now. This is also not to us now. Angle Z we can calculate very easily. Angle Z it will be 360 degree minus angle 3 minus angle 4. The summation of all the angles at this point will be 360. Angle 3 and angle 4 is on to us. So, as we subtract the angle 3 and angle 4 from the 360 degree, we will get the angle chat. So, that's all it. We will get the angle chat as 65 degree, 58 minute and 53 seconds. We have already calculated, we have calculated the angle x also and we have calculated the angle y also. Now, we will apply the sign rule in triangle. So, this is the dead right now, this is C point C. We have to write C here. The z is the angle, so we will write ADC and BDC. So in the triangle ADC, apply the sign rule. What is that? The side divided by sine of angle opposite to it. So we will take first of all this AC. AC divided by sine of opposite angle. The opposite angle is 1, sine 1 degree equals to the CD divided by opposite angle that is X so sin X from here we can write that AC equals to CD into sin 1 divided by sin X the one angle 1 is known to us we have calculated the X here that is 13 degree 28 minutes 2 second and CD is given as 200 meter so, we will put all this value, we will get AC as 424.494 meters. Similarly, in the triangle B, D and C, apply the sign rule, we will write BZ divided by the opposite angle is 2, so sin 2 equals to this CD divided by sin angle, the opposite angle is y, so sin angle y. So here, this is equals to CD dot sin angle 2 divided by Sine angle y. C D is not as 200 meter. Angle 2 is already given in the problem. The angle y we have calculated here as 60 degree 35 minutes 48 seconds. So if we we'll solve this, we will get the GC as 488.451 meter. Now we can use the formula very easily for the AB that is. In this to find out distance between A and B that is AB square equals to AC square plus BC square minus twice of AC dot BC into cos of angle in between them that is the cos of Z. 
the angle jet we have calculated here. AC is we have already calculated here. This is the BC which we have calculated. So all the everything is not to us. AC is not to us. BC is not to us. And the angle jet is not to us. If we solve this, we will get the distance between A and B as Four ninety nine point nine eight seven meters. So what we have done in this problem? Let's divide it once again. The area was divided into number of triangles, and the CD was base line. The distance of CD was given as two hundred meter. Angle one two, angle three and four was given, and you were asked to find out the distance between A and B. We have simply used uh, this triangle ADC. Angle one and angle three was known to us. We have subtracted that from 180 degree. We got the angle X. Similarly, here we have subtracted the angle two and angle four from 180 degree. We got the angle Y. The summation of all the angles at the point C will be 360 degree. So we have subtracted three and angle three and angle four from 360 degree, and we got the angle Z. Then in both the triangles, we applied the sine rules, and we try to find. The AC and BC. After getting the AC and BC, we use the formula AB square equals to AC square plus BC square minus twice of AC into BC cos of Z. By using this, we have calculated the distance between A and B as 49.987 meter. This is how we solve the problems using trigonometric triangulations. This is all about triangulation. Thank you.